We've been working now with Robert and Mayaka now for about the last 10 months. So we actually started working together in June 2016. They're actually the first Abacus client that came on board um, from a Conversant CRM um, solution point of view. So really the main point of today's session is actually to share a case study with you. As part of that, what we're going to do, I'm going to give you a top line overview in terms of what the Conversant um, CRM solution is. Robert's then going to talk in a bit more depth around from a Mayaka point of view. So background to the business, why they decided to go ahead with this, how they found it to date. We're then going to give you the results to date over the course of the last 10 months. And then finally, we're going to give you three key takeouts from that. Okay, so as a starting point, what we're going to do here is actually give you an overview, as I said, in terms of what the Conversant CRM solution is. But what I'm also going to do to make it as easy as possible to understand is actually pull out how we're different to the rest of the market. Because one bit of feedback I get from all marketers across the board is that after a while, a lot of these solutions can kind of blend into one. So really a big part of my job is to try and make this as easy to understand as possible. So the fundamental difference and everything really flows from here is that we are talking about identifying individuals. Now that might sound very strange when we're talking to a lot of DM marketers because you're used to talking to individuals. But when you're talking online, a lot of that solution is cookie based. So if you think that the average person in the UK has got 11 different cookies associated with them at any one given time, that can make things very difficult. So just to, just to clear it up for you, as an example, if you're on your mobile device, that's one cookie. On your tablet device, that's another cookie. You could be on your laptop going on to Internet Explorer, that's another cookie. Google Chrome, different cookie. So what that means from a media delivery point of view across those 11 cookies, whereas we're seeing one person, other media delivery providers could actually be seeing three, four or five different people. So there's a massive knock-on effect from that in terms of efficiency. You're talking about things like cross-device, personalization, et cetera. Now, the next big point to this, as well as around data, which you guys are obviously very familiar with. So if you're talking about a cookie-based solution, the average lifetime of a cookie is between 30 to 45 days. Now, obviously, that can vary. Sometimes it's more. Sometimes it literally could be as soon as someone actually logs out from that browser. However, there's obviously limited data from a cookie because all you've got is that window for however long that cookie's alive. Whereas what we're talking about from our data point of view on that individual is having data for up to 400 days. So by definition, you're seeing more what they're buying across various brands. You're seeing what they're genuinely interested in, what they're really interested in, and you can build a solid profile. So that's very, very important then when it comes down to actually personalizing the message and the conversation to that person. The next big thing as well, which you guys are very, very used to doing from a direct mail point of view, is having a different conversation with your existing customers versus new prospects. Now, from an online point of view, if you're talking about a cookie solution, Someone could land on your website and leave. Now, they could actually have been your best customer or they could have been a brand new prospect and you've actually got no way of knowing. Now, I'm guessing that you want to have a very different conversation with that person based on where they're up to in the customer life cycle. And by cross-referencing data that you have on your customer file, which to be completely clear is anonymized before it comes through to us, we can then actually start matching and identifying who your customers are and having that separate conversation with your customers versus brand new prospects. So if you're going to summarize this, when you're looking at a cookie-based solution, as I said, going back to the fact that you've got the issues around actually matching those cookies to an individual, most people are using this to say do retargeting, which is a very short-term conversation. So it could be someone comes to your site, leaves without buying. You might be in contact with them, say, for 10 to 14 days, very limited conversation. What we're talking about here, though, is actually having a proactive, ongoing conversation with that person. So what I mean by that is we can actually be talking to people that have visited your site recently historical site visitors, so people have been to your site maybe two, three, four months ago, but also proactively go after people that are in your customer base that haven't actually even been to your site. So over time, we're talking to more relevant people. And the reality is, exactly as you would with your email or direct mail, if you truly, truly want to influence anyone, whether it's an existing customer or a new prospect, you have to have that ongoing conversation with them rather than a short 10-day you know, window, for example. The next big thing on this, what all this really means as well, because we're talking about an individual and having a lot of data on them, is that we can do one-to-one -one personalization. And there's different definitions of personalization in the market. So just to be completely clear what I'm talking about here is if you having hundreds and hundreds of variations of a creative that we serve dynamically to that person based on where they're up to in the customer life cycle. So that's the level that we're talking about here. Again, if you're talking about a cookie-based solution where you can't even identify the individual, you're struggling to get a lot of data on them, it's very, very difficult to actually do personalization. And that could be very, very basic in terms of, okay, someone's viewed that product on the site, the minute they leave, we're just gonna serve them that for the next 14 days. Very, very basic. The next big one as well is cross-device. So the average person in the UK has actually got 3.5 devices. And what we're seeing now, um, really for the first time over the last year or so, is that people now are spending more and more time online on their mobile and tablet, so more than 50% of their time. However, they're still converting on their desktop. So it's very, very important from a marketing point of view that you can actually understand that customer journey to really understand what is and isn't working. Now, we've actually had our match rates verified by Comscore, 
And based on a sample size of 1.5 million, we actually got a 96% accuracy rate. Again, if you go back to, to other providers when they're talking about cross device, if it's a cookie-based solution, can't identify an individual, they're doing their matching based on probabilistic data, which is basically educated guesswork. So it's never ever going to be as accurate as what we're talking about here. Then the final one, and again, this is what I hear from marketers all the time in terms of attribution, is actually a nightmare now. Not just in the digital space, but generally across the board, because there's so many channels now where there's touch points for individuals before they actually go on to buy. So what we try and do to really help brands with that is what we call incremental measurement, where you essentially have test and control groups chosen at random, whereby there'll be existing customers in both groups, there'll be site visitors in both groups. One group of around about 90% will actually receive the conversant personalized ads we want them to receive. The remaining 10% will receive brand neutral ads. So for example, it could be charity ads. If you think that both of those groups have got the same opportunity to be exposed to everything else that you're doing, so your email, your direct mail, your TV, the only difference is that one gets the conversant ads, the other one doesn't. From there, you're going to be able to see the uplift and the difference that we're actually genuinely making. So if you compare that back to a lot of attribution in the market, it could be on things like last click or just because you've actually been part of that, that customer journey. It doesn't necessarily tell you really, really where the true value is. Okay, so that's a top line overview there in terms of conversant. I'm now going to hand you over to Robert that's going to give you a bit more overview from a macro point of view. I'm afraid I'm not quite as slick as Andy. Uh, <laughs> with the numbers. But um, so a quick word about Mayaka. Uh, we're uh, furniture and home interiors business, very much uh, with an ethical uh, ethos. Uh, founded in 1999, uh, we went uh, direct marketing in 2006-ish and got going with Abacus in 2009 or 10. Uh, we're 90% uh, direct and two stores one in uh, Somerset and one in Guildford. And we have plans to expand our, our stores. Um, typically speaking, we recruit for our catalogues and about 80% of our recruitment of new customers is done offline and 20% uh, historically certainly has been online. And I suppose that's really our challenge. Uh, we're a typical AOV is about 250. Uh, catalog average order value. We turn over about six million pounds. Uh, we're just under a hundred thousand database, um, and we get about ten to fifteen thousand visitors a week, depending on time of time of year on the website. So um, we've been very catalog driven. Uh, Abacus has been our main source of data. We've experimented with all the others, but are sort of settling mostly with Abacus. Um, and that just goes on and on and is really the core of our recruitment activity. But the challenge really is to follow the customer and to um, find them online. Uh, and that, I don't know about you, but whenever I talk to, uh, to people at these kind of gatherings, everyone says the same thing. It's damn difficult to spend money effectively online and to recruit new customers online. And so that's our challenge, particularly for a, new, for a niche brand how to get the visibility. So why Conversant? Um, well, we, we tried another agency for this kind of marketing um, uh, in 2014. We had a bit of a full start. I think it was all a bit early days for us all. The, the tracking and the expectations and the general understanding of the whole process was um, somewhat around zero, and we got nowhere. So um, we, we backed off doing this kind of thing at that point. Since then, we've been experimenting with various different, uh, all the channels, the media channels that uh, I'm sure you're all familiar with. And we've sort of boiled our online um, strategy down to, uh, sounds a bit general, but it's uh, maximum visibility and maximum communication. And that's really where, where Conversant comes in. And I'm not going to go and sort of repeat all the stuff that um, Andy just come in. But when I met Oded, sorry about that, uh, I met Oded, who is the, um, the big cheese at uh, Conversant. They're a big business, a couple of million, a couple of, I don't know how many million uh, you do in, in Europe, but uh, they're a big business. And he was very keen to get into gear with um, the Abacus Alliance, and I chatted with him, and we sort of hit it off, and we've, we've sort of been working together um, uh, over the last year. 
And I have to say, Conversant have worked very hard um, to, um, uh, under, to help us understand what it is that's going on. Uh, uh, because we're all so used in our industry to, to, to do to, uh, for tracking and matchback and coding, etc. And it's different online, as we all know. So the point is that they, um, we buy their focus on the individual, we buy their, their um, thinking, uh, their, their understanding about devices, their focus on, on the individual, as I say, and the, the sort of personal messaging and the frequency of, the, the, of that messaging that, if, if you like, is a sort of online equivalent of Abacus, of, date, of, of cold mailing. So we were, we were prepared to give it a shot. We allocated a certain amount of budget. It's a sort of modest percentage of our overall spend. And we committed to, to a, a sort of reasonably long-term strategy of doing it for six to, six to 12 months with Conversant. Um, and the differences uh, that, that Conversant bring to our, uh, brought to it compared with our first attempt, as I say, was to really understand the process. Because <clears throat> it is a bit different. Um, understand, we, we, we sort of naively thought that everyone who came on our website would then be messaged. It doesn't work like that. They have to be matched. And they have to have them on their database, just like the Alliance. So the whole point is there is a, there is a, there is a steady growth as your, as your as your traffic grows and they recognize more and more of your traffic as, the, as their alliance grows. Our match rate of our data has grown from a tiny percentage when we first started with them of 10, less than 10%. And it's now approaching, it's now approaching 40, 45%. And as they get more and more clients, which is really why I'm standing here today, to persuade you all to come and do it, because it's just like the alliance. The more of, the more of us who, who are involved, the more of our data will be recognized, the higher the match rate, the more messaging goes on. And it's exactly the same principle. It's about targeting. So as I say, they helped us um, understand that. And we, we had a bit of, we, I must admit, we, we struggled a bit to begin with to, to, get, to, to grasp it all. But they were very patient. We had a number of rather robust conversations. But as I say, they were very patient. Um, and... <coughs> I think we're pretty convinced now, and you'll hear more about our numbers. The, the key to it is incrementality, is understanding the difference between those people that, that are identified uh, on our site who don't get message with Mayaka, get message with something like a charity, and those people who do get message with uh, Mayaka. And after three months, and they're very, very rigid, they would not give us data until they had enough to... Um, they had enough... Uh, data to give us a statistically valid um, result, our, um, the, their estimate, or not estimate, the incrementality is showing something like 20% uh, plus 27% improvement of performance over those who've been messaged who are those who are not, which is really quite a solid um, statistic. We're not accepting that straight off because it's quite, uh, it's, it's, quite a, it's quite a high number. And we're, we're, we're going through a whole cycle to um, uh, a, a, an annual cycle to before we sort of, if you like, finally make up our minds about being convinced, much to their frustration. Um, but the, the incrementality is very important. The other thing is, is the verification of the orders. We can look at the, convert, the, the orders that have been messaged, those that have been um, con converted, and we can match them back to our own data insofar as uh, we can identify that. And so we get into the whole attribution game which is getting more and more complicated, but it's something that we're beginning to do and to try and understand um, how the messaging process and the performance fits in with the rest of our performance. So we've, we, six months in, or nine months in, we're pretty convinced. We think we're going to go on. And of course, the challenge then comes to spend more, because as your site traffic grows, uh, the, the logic is that you should spend more to, to follow that traffic. And that's really why we're waiting to see the cycle through. But at the moment, we feel pretty positive about it. And I have to say, Conversant are very good at account management. They spend a lot of time with you. They, we have regular quarterly meetings. Andy is very good. He's always on the phone. 
he's, they're, they're really exceptionally good at managing expectations. And I think that whole point is really why we decided, why we first went with Conversant, is it's the one-stop shop, it's the Abacus long-term relationship, and, and the feeling that you're working with a, a data group, um, or a group of data, which although different sets of data, ultimately have links and have common, common ground and overlap. And that then brings me really to, to how, uh, how it fits with the rest of our marketing. One of the things that excited me a lot to start with was the idea of as we do cold mailings, we could message those names, even though they're cold, even though they haven't been on their site because they've been recognized. So you could have a messaging strategy. So that's down the road. That's, that doesn't exist yet. They haven't even got a name for it yet, but it's going to happen in due course. So I'm convinced that that will make quite a difference. Um, we are very much a considered purchase. People come to our site frequently, and over a very long time, they take ages to make up their mind. And so the more we can put ourselves in front of them, the more visible we can be, the better. And so obviously that, that's got to work for cold mailing as well as for people who've visited the site and who are aware of us. And in terms of how it fits with our digital strategy, as I say, it's all about, as far as we're concerned, visibility and communication. And it's about finding new customers and driving, sorry, finding new um, prospects. So we're using those digital um, channels which can drive traffic to the website. And then the logic is that Conversant <coughs> follows up uh, with messaging. And we're testing different creatives, different messages. Ultimately, the more traffic you've got, the more time you can put it into it, the more convinced you get, then um, the, the more resources you can put into it, the different creatives, the different messages. So we're early days in all that, but so far we're, we're pretty convinced. So, and of course, the, you can also eventually do specific promotions as well. At the moment, it's um, fairly generic stuff, depending on the, the customer or the prospect that, that's visited. But as we get more, uh, more involved and get more learning under our belts, we can, ad we can adjust our creative to um, focus on individual promotions. So I think that probably covers what I've got to say. Perfect. Right. Thank okay. you. <laughs> Thanks, Robert. OK, now we're going to share some specific results with you. So as Robert mentioned, they're still looking to do the full 12-month SOG before they actually, I guess, are convinced by the incrementality literally month for month. But what we actually do is do the incremental studies literally every 90 days. So every three months, you get a different read. And over the 10-month period to date, the incrementality has come through at six to one. So just to be completely clear, that's for every pound spent, six pounds come back on an incremental level. Now. The next piece is actually on message revenue. So this is basically how a lot of media providers are actually measuring or going into attribution models. This is when someone's actually been served an ad, then they've gone on to buy, say, within a 30-day time frame. If you look at it on that level, we're actually looking at a 25 to 1 return on message revenue. So big numbers here. But again, to be completely clear, the reason why we do the incrementality is to actually show the genuine value that we're offering here, and that's based on the incremental numbers. The other key element to this as well is that, as I sort of said at the start, this really fits into a whole retention and also acquisition strategy. So of all, all of the, the revenue and everything we've driven so far, 51% of those have actually been new customers. So it really just ticks both boxes in terms of retention and acquisition. The next big thing as well, in terms of Robert alluded to there, things like match rates. So when we're talking about actually identifying your existing customers, obviously when we actually receive your, your customer file, which is again to reiterate, is all anonymized before it comes to us anyway, so completely foreign from a data protection point of view, we're obviously not going to be able to go and find all of your existing customers online straight away. There's a matching process. And as Robert said, the more customers we have involved in this, the quicker the matching becomes. So when we actually started this in June last year, we could actually find and identify 6% of Marcus customers. You look at it now, and it's 38%. So we've driven substantially in, in that sort of 10-month period. And that literally will grow day by day, week by week, et cetera, as we go through. So that becomes very, very powerful because then essentially this becomes a new marketing channel to your existing customers. So in a similar sort of way that you'd actually be sending an email or direct mail to your existing customers, we can essentially be doing the same from a display point of view and having that ongoing conversation. The next big point of all this as well is in terms of reach. Now to clarify, when I'm talking about reach, I'm not talking about just reaching people for the sake of it. We could reach millions and millions of people here if we wanted to. What I'm talking about though here is actually talking to warm people. So to clarify what I mean by warm, they've either visited the marker site or they've bought from them previously. So when we started the program last June, we, we were talking to 40,000 people that month. 
You fast forward that nine, 10 months down the track. And again, bearing in mind, you're talking about that ongoing conversation. We're talking about historical sites, interactors, people that are buying as we go through. We're now talking to 143,000 people per month. And these are warm people that have already engaged with the brand. So it's very, very powerful in terms of that ongoing conversation. And the final piece, if you're looking at the differences between the test and control, obviously the revenue is going to be the main thing that people are interested in, but also you can look down to things like engagement as well. So people are within those test and control groups that have received the conversant ads are 30% more likely to actually go back and visit the Mayaka website. So again, even from an engagement point of view, very, very powerful. So finally, three key takeouts. The biggest one, which as I said, everything really flows from here is the fact that we're talking about identifying individuals. That makes everything else possible. If it's cookie based, you can't do a lot of these things that we're talking about to great effects. So the personalization, really understanding an individual, having that ongoing conversation. Um, that, that's the, really the second point in terms of the ongoing piece, the personalization down to that one-to-one -one level. Obviously, the more we understand about that person, the more relevant you can make it for them, the more chance you actually have of influencing them and then going on to buy more frequently from you. Then the final one is, is the incremental measurement. Now, this is really, really powerful. Now, one thing we actually haven't covered off on this as well, though, because we're talking about individuals, if, for example, you're having offline sales, so you might have stores or you might have people that are phoning up and making purchases, as long as you can feed that data back to us, we can actually also report back on the incrementality there as well. So effectively, what influence is your online advertising having on offline sales? 